Maybe, tell you what, I was giving you something that's really been a blessing to you, an encouragement to you. Give you an opportunity to stand. You can read it or quote it if you want to. Give you the opportunity to do it right now. Maybe a verse that just comes to mind that's really been a blessing to you. Well, Jim. Amen. Amen. We're so offended many times by so many things. We let everything, we're living in a world today, everything offends everybody, and you've got to change it because they're offended. But boy, I'll tell you what, if you've got peace in the Lord, things shouldn't offend you, especially the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody else? Sister Mark. Amen. You know, one of the hardest things in a person's life is waiting. Waiting and waiting, waiting on the Lord. But you know what? God rewards it when we wait. That's a good verse. Amen. Somebody else? Sister Carter. Uh, Psalms 19, 1. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shew his handiwork. Amen. I'm just amazed all the time. I always tell Stephanie, God does good work. It's just amazing. We have these tiny little birds that are have a nest in our yard, you know. It just amazes me, you know, God, how those little things survive, and it's, it's a miracle. Yeah, amen, amen. Some of them don't survive so well. There was a hummingbird got in our garage yesterday uh -oh. and wouldn't get out. He died. <clears throat> I didn't kill him. He just died. I mean, it's just... He wasn't right with God, and he died. I guess I, mean, I can figure. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody else. Sister Norma. Psalms forty six ten. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. We'll tell you what. Being still, the time spent with Lord is just knowing He's God. One amazing thing, Sister Galen. Somebody else? This is Melinda. Psalm 18, 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Amen. Girdeth with strength. Hunter. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be about covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. What a promise. What a promise. Sister Loretta. Amen. Brother Bill? 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you to believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. You know, I, I praise the Lord we've got to know so salvation, not a hope so. Yeah. You can know that you have Christ as your, as your Savior. Amen. This is Twilight. Need our faith exercised and strengthened, don't we? Man. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Proverbs 31 6. Amen. That's good. Sister. Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with righteousness. Amen. Amen. Are you claiming that because that baby's coming and you're going to deliver and you're saying, I am with thee? <laughs> I would be. <laughs> Amen. That's good. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Somebody else? Anybody else? Word of God's rich. It's good, isn't it? It is good. The Word of God. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. And if you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word if you're able to. Galatians chapter 6. We can find strength in the Word of God. We can find the confidence to live day by day and do what the Lord wants us to do. 
And it's good for us to, to have the Word of God on our hearts. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So taking the Word of God and placing it in our hearts, but not in our, only in our hearts, but within our lives to live daily by the Word of God. And how the Lord wants us to live for Him and serve Him. Amen. The Word of God is rich. It's rich. Galatians chapter 6, uh, we'll begin reading verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, <clears throat> we find here that there's a, the law of, of sowing and reaping. We find here that, that there's that, that part of, this, of our lives that's so, so important. Uh, verse 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. We see that there's different types of sowing. And it's important how we sow and what we're sowing to. Verse 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And so the Lord says there's going to be a, a reaping time. If we'll stay close to Him, he'll, he'll bless us in that reaping time. But look at verse 10, which will be our text tonight. It says, for, As we have therefore opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Again, it says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. I'd like to preach a message of titled Opportunity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for the blessed hope that we have in our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for the Word of God and how that it is rich and how that it directs us, it guides us, Lord, it it comforts us, it strengthens us, it rebukes us. Lord, it, it gives us, Lord, that which we need on a day-to-day -day basis. Lord, it is our life's food. And so, Lord, may we take it to heart and may we take it to mind. And, Lord, may we allow it to be a part of our lives every single day. Lord, I pray that you would take the Word of God tonight. And, Lord, that you would enrich in our lives and that you would strengthen us, help us to live for you. Lord, I pray that you be glorified. Help us to realize that you have given us opportunity opportunity to do that which will be pleasing unto you and to serve you. Lord, thank you for the folks tonight. Lord, bless them in a special way. Forgive us of our sin where we fail you and sin against you. Forgive us as a nation, Lord, where we have sinned against you as a nation. Lord, I pray that you would turn our hearts back to thee. Lord, I pray that there would be a stirring and reviving in the, in the hearts of your people, Lord. I pray that we'd see revival across this land be with our president and the leaders of our country. May they follow the word of God. May they draw near to you, Lord. And if those that are not saved would get saved. But, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're using them. And, Lord, I pray that you continue to use them. Lord, I pray we would always stand with Israel. And, Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified in these days before us. And, Lord, I pray that you'd help each of us to live for you. For these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. When you look back up in, in Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 10, there says, as we have therefore opportunity. Opportunity is, is so important. Redeeming the time as it's, it's spoken of there in Galatians. Taking advantage of the time that the Lord has given us. Every, every person in this room, life is short. Life's brief. We don't have, you know, we don't know that we'll have a, a, a tomorrow, but we know that we've got this moment and we need to take the opportunity that God has given us at every moment to serve and live for Him. Opportunity is a great thing. When it's used for the Lord, when it's granted to us by the Lord, and God has, has a, a great desire for us to obey Him, to obey His Word, and, and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Many times we go through the day, maybe we go through the week, and God gives us opportunity, and the Holy Spirit directs us. And, and sometimes we take the opportunities that the Lord gives us, and sometimes we don't. We need to be cautious about uh, walking by the opportunities that the Lord's placed in front of us. Each of our lives have an opportunity every day to, to do good and, and to follow the Lord. And, and, but there's also the opportunities of the world that will mislead and will guide us astray, that will guide us the wrong direction. And so there's good opportunities and there's bad opportunities. And we, we've, many times we've got to filter through those opportunities. And the best way to do it is what we just used a while ago, the Word of God. As you was quoting Scripture or, or reading Scripture, uh, we need to take those opportunities and filter them through God's Word. And allow God to speak to our hearts and show us the, the opportunities that He wants us to take. I want us to consider the opportunities of the Lord tonight here. There's a, the law, first of all, of the, of the sower that is attached to every opportunity. 
When you read this in context, that, that verse there talking about the opportunities is not misplaced in Galatians. It's there for a reason. When you go back up into verse 7 and verse 8 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's an opportunity. It goes on there and says, For he that soweth to his flesh, and of his flesh, uh, he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Opportunity comes. Listen, with every opportunity, we must be careful about those opportunities. Because there's an opportunity to either sow to the Spirit, sow to the Lord, or an opportunity to sow to the flesh and do what we want to do. And maybe something that's not pleasing unto God. And so we got to be cautious. There is that sowing and reaping in, in, in every opportunity that you go through. This week you may be put placed in, in certain positions and certain opportunities to, to brag on the Lord, to testify of God's goodness to you, to, to exalt the Lord, and you need to take that. But you may also be placed in an opportunity where Satan wants you to compromise your testimony, compromise the Word of God, uh, be a poor testimony, say some things that may be hurtful in, uh, to the testimony of Christ. And you've got to be careful that you don't step through those doors of that opportunity because that opportunity is an opportunity of destruction. So we've got to be cautious about the opportunities. There is a sowing and a reaping attached to every opportunity. When you look at life and when you look at the opportunities that you have this week, God's going to give you some opportunities to be a witness for Him. God's going to give you an opportunity to magnify Him. God's going to give you an opportunity to, to be a, a witness and a testimony of what Jesus Christ has done in your heart and life. The sad part is that many Christians never take those opportunities. We step sidestep them because we're afraid of what people might think or what people might say. And with those opportunities, we need to be aggressive and, and take the opportunity that God gives us to magnify Him because in so doing, we're sowing the Word of God. We're sowing the seed that others might know Jesus Christ. I look back over the years and the opportunities that, that maybe to, to be a witness and to tell people about Jesus Christ that I've failed to take. And maybe they never come back again. Never there again. But also look at the opportunities where, that Satan has placed and this world has placed in front of me that, that I have stepped through that I should have never taken. We've got to be cautious because there is a sowing and a reaping attached to opportunities. You say, well, I just won't do anything. Well, you, that, you can't do that. Because we're going to be responsible. I believe that you and I will stand before the Lord one of these days and give an account of the opportunities even that we had. The opportunities to do good unto the Lord and do good unto a man and to, to do what the Lord would have us to do. And so there's the opportunities. There's the sowing and the reaping that is attached to those opportunities. Also, there's the opportunity to do good unto all men. And we've got to realize that God's got you here for a reason. If God was done with you, He'd take you home. Uh, I've talked to, and many times when people get a little bit older and, and, and uh, we want to call them a little more mature in age, and they begin to have the physical problems, they begin to have the, 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 the situations where they just can't hardly get around, they can't, and they're in pain and different things, and I've literally had them say to me, I don't know why God's keeping me here. I don't know why I'm still here. And I do, because God's not done with them. There's opportunities for each of us. As we, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. And so the Lord has given us opportunity to do good unto all people. And not just the saved, not just the lost, not just this person, that person, but to every person. God has given us opportunity to go to do good unto all men, the saved and the, and the lost alike. This gives us opportunity to witness to the lost and to point them to Jesus Christ. I think about the, the times that that people in my life had, had witnessed to me in different ones. And honestly, I, I, I wish I knew who the lady was that when I was standing at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Piedmont, Missouri, and uh, back, uh, I don't know, it was probably in, in uh, 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 1974, 1975, is before I got saved. And I remember uh, standing there and that lady turning around and looking at me and saying, would you like to go forward and get saved? Now, I didn't go forward and get saved that day, but boy, it put some conviction in my heart. 
And it was in a church service. She turns around. She looks at this teenage boy and has got a hold of the back of the pew that was under conviction. And in my heart, I don't know if I was white or what, I and mean, you're just washed out or what, but man, I knew my heart was beating like crazy. And I was under conviction, knew that if I died at that very moment, I'd go to hell. And she took the opportunity to, to look at me and say, would you like to go forward and get saved? Now, I didn't accept that opportunity, but she took the opportunity to tell me or to, get, to, to try to get me to go forward and get saved. I think over the years of different ones that I've talked to about the Lord that, that the opportunity was there to, to, to give them the gospel. I think about different ones that, that uh, over the years that not just I but others have talked to and, and they would receive Christ as their Savior and within maybe a week or even less, they slipped out into eternity. Well, if they hadn't got saved, if somebody hadn't taken the opportunity to tell them about Jesus Christ and what Jesus did at Calvary for us, how they went to Calvary and went to that old rugged tree and died on that cross and shed his precious blood and, and, and arose again the third day uh, 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 from the grave and, and ascended up unto the Father. And because he lives, we can live also. We can have eternal life. Sharing that opportunity with others to give them the chance to be saved. I'm going to be honest with you, not everybody's going to receive Christ. But every person ought to get the opportunity to. I heard a person say one time, you know, they was talking and, or it may have been a preacher and, they, and I've, I've heard different ones even uh, make the comment, why should you get another opportunity to get saved when God only promises you one and you reject it? It's the mercy of God. It's the grace of God. But he gives every person an opportunity. But in so doing, he uses you and I many times to get the gospel to them so that they might be saved. And I think of the different ones over the years that I've went time and time and time again and talked to them and talked to them and talked to them. I think about old Bill Mounts years ago. I, I was ashamed of myself. I really was, but I couldn't help it. I'd go to his house every Thursday night. But Ron, I, I'll be honest with you, I was ashamed of myself. I, I, it got, it got to, he knew I liked sweet tea. It got to where when I showed up, he had sweet tea ready for me. He knew I was coming. And we'd sit down and, and we'd visit a little bit. And before long, I'd turn the, the conversation to salvation. And he'd sit there and say, I don't want to get saved. And he, I, I want to get saved one of these days and, and, and everything. And, and I, I, it bothered me so much that I was going so often. Finally, I... I I quit for about two weeks. Didn't go out to his house on Thursday night. And he asked one of the fellows, he said, Is, has something happened to Rodney? So I haven't seen him in two weeks. He always comes and talks to me about the Lord. I started going back. Never got saved. And they up and moved. Moved to Illinois or someplace. I don't remember where it was. Never seen the man get saved. One Sunday night. My wife and I, we sit over on this side in uh, uh, Victor Baptist Temple in Piedmont. On the front row, I was youth pastor, and, and we had all of our teens lined up behind us all the time. And unless they sit with their parents, we had those teens. We had about th two or three rows of teenagers, and we sat in the front and, and uh, had a little test with singing and everything. And, and uh, all of a sudden, I heard Brother Parker say, yes, what, what do you want to say? And he stood up, and or I heard somebody say, can I say something? And and we turned, I turned around and looked, and it was Bill Mounts. Bill Mounts stood up in the back. And he said, I just want everybody to know in church, I got saved. I got saved. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what. And I wasn't the only one that witnessed to him. I think of Brother Dale Beard, and he, he picked up his kids, and, and Dale would witness to him and everything. And, and, and Dale picked up his kids on the bus route, and, and it was just, you know, different ones in the church. But the opportunity was there. What if nobody took the opportunity? Bill Mounts would, would have been lost without Christ. And in this room, sitting here right now, every single person in this room, God gave you an opportunity to be saved. Somebody come to you. And oh, I'll tell you what, the Lord's going to place upon your uh, life and my life opportunities to tell others about Jesus Christ that they might be saved.
And it's so important that we're careful to do that and to, and to take the gospel to them. Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Excuse me, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. Without a vision of reaching people and without a vision of desiring to get the gospel to them, hey, listen, they're going to die without Christ. We need to take every opportunity to get the gospel out. When we, and last night, or yesterday, and and even Janine said something to me. I got out of the vehicle a, a couple times and everything, and I didn't have a gospel track with me. Or, or no, it was, yes, it was yesterday in visitation. And, and, and we met people. For some reason, I didn't have the, those, those tracks in my pocket. I was trying to find a certain, uh, uh, some certain folks, and, and I, I was at the wrong house, and I didn't have the gospel tracks in my pocket. I, 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 I don't know why. It's just one of those uh, senior moments or something. I don't know. But I didn't have them, and, and I lost opportunity to give out some gospel tracts there that I could have to tell people about Christ. And boy, we need to be cautious, and we need to be careful, and look for the opportunities that the Lord gives us to, to give out the, the gospel, to tell others about Jesus Christ. The Lord's going to give you opportunities this week, and we need to take those opportunities. You say, well, preacher, I just don't know what to say. How about why don't you just tell them what Jesus has done in your heart and life? I preach, I'm just, I just don't have the words. You, you got the words when the ball team's winning. Well, I, I, I'm just kind of backward. You're not backward when something goes your, your way. Hey, share Jesus Christ with them. I'll tell you what, he say, well, I just don't think I can do it. Well, then you invite them to church and I'll share Christ with them. Amen. But take the opportunities. To, it says unto all men. All men. I, I've seen people and... and, and and maybe it's just me. I, I, you know, uh, I've seen people that I think, I, I, need, to, I need to give them a gospel track. I, I meet somebody and, I, and I'm thinking, boy, today when I see people, I'm going to give every one of them a gospel track. And I'll see this person, give them a gospel track, see this person. And then you see this big old burly guy or something like that. It looks like he's mad at the world coming. You're thinking, eh, you know, maybe not everybody. <laughs> but you know what? It says unto all men. We need to give them the gospel. The opportunity is there. We just need to take the opportunity to get the gospel to them. Where, wherever we're at and whatever we're doing, we need to take that opportunity that they might be saved, doing good unto all men, that they might see Jesus Christ in their lives and to, and to turn to the Lord. So many times uh, the Lord gives us opportunities. I, the Lord gave us an opportunity just to leave a little bit of a witness this week. We was at a barbecue with a bunch of people and a lot, a lot of lost folks and, and everything. And I was asked to, to uh, uh, ask a blessing on the, on the, on the barbecue. And, and we did. And so we inserted, uh, we thank the Lord for his salvation through Jesus Christ and his shed blood. Amen. Amen. And just a little thing, but it's an opportunity. An opportunity that we have. To get the gospel out. To tell others about Christ. To sow some seed. Do good unto the saved also no matter if they're, they're living for the Lord or not. You know sometimes uh, we, we try to, you know maybe we do good unto those who are, 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 are in their serving the Lord. But it says unto all men. People are going through difficult times. People are going through struggles. It, it doesn't matter whether they fall away from the Lord. They need somebody to do good to them. And the Lord's going to give us opportunity. It may be uh, an encouraging word. It may be just a, a going by and say, hey, listen, I've been missing you. And, and, and like, to, and like to, to, to see if you need anything. We sat on a porch with a lady yesterday. And, 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 and before we got ready to leave, I, I said, hey, can we do anything for you? Anything? She said, well, she said, uh, no, I, I'm... I, I'm Everything's good. She said, I'm doing good. She said, I thank you for asking me, though. She said, you can pray. Just remember me in person. Well, we do that. And I said, we'll have prayer right now. I had prayer with her. And I think it was an encouragement to her. Just stop. An opportunity. We was driving on visitation. And, and Janine says, hey, there's. And, and we, we just swung around and pulled down there in front of her house, got out, and went up and sat on the porch just for a few minutes. An opportunity that just took a few minutes to maybe be a blessing and encouragement to a sister in Christ, to encourage them. We need to take the opportunities. We get so busy and we live in such a fast-paced world that we fly by opportunity to do good unto all men. 
We need to take those opportunities. We need to try to be an encouragement. You know, it, it, we see one another in church and we shake one of those hands and we try. You know, and it was, hey man, good to see you and, and everything and, and try to encourage. But you know what? Not just us. There's a lot of folks out here in the world that know Christ as their Savior. But they need some encouragement. They need somebody to encourage them to get back in church. Well, I'm afraid if I say something to them, they're going to get upset. If God gives you an opportunity to say something to them, encourage them. Encourage them. we got Christians that are down. And what's sad so many times, uh, sometimes even as fundamental Baptists, we, we, we think that we got to be so straight, so staunch, and so strict that we're kicking them while they're down. Instead of that, we, the opportunity there is to encourage them and to strengthen them in the Lord. For them to see the love of God and to remind them that the Lord loves them and He cares about where they're at in their life. Hey, listen, we need to, we need to pick them up. God's given us an opportunity to build, not to tear down. Anybody can tear something up. Anybody can tear something down. But man, I tell you what, God has given us opportunities to build uh, Christians, to build and encourage and to, and to strengthen them. We need to take every opportunity that He's given us. Uh, Galatians 6, uh, 1 and 2 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Hey, listen, hey, don't think that you're so much better than somebody else, because you could be the next person down there. You could be, hey, the Bible says, take heed that you stand lest ye fall. Every single person in this room, you may think that you're above a falling away from the Lord, getting out of church, a, a falling into sin, but you're not. I'm not. So we need to take opportunity to encourage, to build up, and to strengthen, to restore. He said, bearing one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. The Lord said, especially unto them who are the household of faith especially unto them who are the household of faith. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Many times we can look around in a, in a service and we can see this one missing, that one missing, and, and maybe it becomes a, it may just be one service, but if it becomes more than one service, we need to find out what's going on and take the opportunity to encourage them. Encourage the Christians, build them up in the Lord. Then there's the opportunity not only unto man, but unto the Lord. I think sometimes we miss that. That God has given us opportunity unto Him. Unto Him. Paul said, talking about the opportunity to serve the Lord. If you read many of the writings of Paul, you'll find a statement similar to this. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated Unto the gospel of God. Paul says, I'm a servant. I'm a servant unto God. You know what? A lot of us, we, we, we don't like that terminology of being a servant. But it's a great opportunity in the Lord. That we can serve the Lord. He continually to refer to himself as that servant of God. That's how we ought to look at ourselves. Because a servant of God, uh, as, as a servant of God, we have opportunity to serve the Lord. The greatest thing in your life and in my life is not making a million dollars and, and putting away uh, tons of money in the bank and owning lands and houses and cars and, 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 and businesses and all that. But it's to serve the Lord, the opportunities to serve Him. An opportunity to lift Him up. He continued to refer to himself that way because he was a servant. Galatians 1.10 there says, for, for, do I, for, do I, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. He said, wait a minute. I'm given, I'm given an opportunity as a servant of, of the Lord. And so to serve God is to please God. It's an opportunity to magnify Him. To lift Him up and to exalt Him. And to, and to glorify His name. There's that opportunity that we have to serve Him with our lives. It's an opportunity to please the Lord. Hey, listen, when's the last time in your life and in your mind that you thought, I want to please God? 
I, I want to please him. Every one of us has been around somebody that seems like they're always trying to do something to please us. Always trying to do something. Hey, can I help you with that? Can I do this for you? And, and they're always trying. They may bring you little gifts. Or they may do this. Or they may say this. Maybe write you little notes. And they're trying to please you. How about doing that for the Lord? As a servant of the Lord, we have an opportunity to please him. To please him. No greater thought would be, should be in our minds, says Carla, than to think that, you know, I pleased the Lord today. I did what he wanted me to do. I was pleasing unto him. Pleasing unto the Lord. That seems strange in our minds and thoughts to even think that way. But Paul said, I want to please God. I'm not worried about pleasing man. I think Paul realized that, hey, listen, if I please God... I'll be pleasing enough to man. I need to please God. So this week, God's going to give you an opportunity to be pleasing unto Him. For Him to look down and say, I'm pleased with the way you lived. I'm pleased with the way that you, that you glorify me. I'm pleased with what you did. We have opportunity to praise and to worship even now our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what? So many times we miss that. The psalmist said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And I think as Christians, many times as, as Baptists, that we're afraid to, to turn loose a little bit and worship the Lord and to praise His name. And yet every person in this room, God gives you opportunity to worship Him, to praise Him, to lift Him up. Not just on Sunday, not just now and then. But I'm, I'm talking about through the day. There's opportunities through your day and through my day that we, can put, that we can praise Him, that we can lift Him up, that we can worship Him. And so many times I think we bypass that opportunity. You may have been praying about something and, and you may have been, and, and the Lord answers your prayer and you see this thing go through and, or whatever's taking place. And, and so many times we are so guilty of failing to praise Him and to worship Him because He's a prayer-answering God. So many times we fail to the opportunity when we see His hand moving and working in our lives or maybe other areas or in somebody else's life. We're so, we're so afraid to, to take time and to stop and just thank Him and to worship Him. Oh, how we need to take opportunity to do that. You know, on Sunday nights, a lot of times, or maybe a Wednesday night, we don't do it so much on Sunday morning because we're trying to keep to a little more to a schedule. But we give opportunity to testify of the goodness of God and to worship. That's praise. To speak up. An opportunity. I'm going to tell you something. If you can't worship Him here, if you can't praise Him here, with that type of opportunity, with other Christians, where are you going to do it at? Where are you going to do it at? And when you stand before God, He may say, you remember the time that I healed you of this? You remember the time that I provided for this? Do you remember when this? Do you remember that? Never once. I gave you opportunity every time to praise me, to thank me, to worship me. And you never took it. You never took it. That's sad. That's real sad. Because this week in your life and in my life, if you just open your eyes, if I'll just open my eyes, there's going to be a multitude of opportunities to thank Him, to worship Him, to praise Him. Some by yourself, but many times in the presence of others. There's been time, and I told you, and I, I don't want to keep talking about me, but things would be hard to do something and be with some, some fellows working on something or whatever, and, and, and they, they have trouble. They said, can you give us a hand with this and get over there and, and just work with it and and God, and a lot of times under my breath, I say, Lord, would you just help me to help me to get this off here, help me to do this or whatever it is so that, uh, and I'll give you the honor that they might know. And man, boom. And I'll say, well, thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I've had some say, what? 
I said, thank you, Lord. I prayed and asked God to help me with that, and he did it. Oh. Opportunity. Opportunity. I said, I'll give you opportunity to praise me. I'll give you opportunity to worship me. I'll give you opportunity to thank me. So there's that, as Paul was talking about that, that opportunity. In Luke chapter 19, I read of this and I think about this, about taking the opportunity to praise the Lord and to worship him. Luke 19, 37 says, And and when he was come nigh even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, and the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they uh, had seen. And boy, they was praising God. They was thanking the Lord. They was taking the opportunity. They had seen the, the mighty hand of God. And verse 38 says, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees and among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. I don't know about you, but I don't want some dumb rock doing my praising for me. I want to praise the Lord. Wouldn't that be something if we're standing there in heaven and the Lord said, I give you this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity, and you didn't praise me. You see that rock down there? It glorified me. It praised me. You wouldn't. Whew. I don't want that. He's going to give us opportunity to, to lift him up and to magnify him and to glorify him. I don't, I don't want that rock doing that for me. How often do we sit back and fail to praise and worship the Lord and to testify of His goodness? There is opportunity too. There's opportunity. We have the opportunity to witness, and we've talked about that, to tell others what Jesus Christ has done in our hearts and lives. We have opportunity to grow in faith, trusting the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from me. With Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. He said, trust in me. He said, don't trust in your own heart. He said, trust in me. He's going to give you an opportunity. He's going to give me an opportunity to trust him by faith. To grow in him. The opportunity this week may be uh, something that, that comes your way that you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. And all you can do is turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. You may be going through a difficult time and there's no answers and you're, and you're struggling with this or struggling with that. And, and, and the Lord says, just trust me. Just trust me. And by trusting Him, He's given you an opportunity to increase your faith in Him and to glorify Him. There's an opportunity in our lives to grow in faith. To grow in trusting Him. But so many times we begin to look some other place and look after something else instead of unto God. Matthew 17, 27, Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have, as, has, have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall uh, remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. He said, I want you to have faith. He's going to give you opportunity. To have faith, you must exercise that faith that you have. He's going to give you opportunity. Somebody quoted a while ago, I believe, but without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And if we want to please Him, we need to take an opportunity. We have opportunity to be used of the Lord. I don't know about you. You say, well, preacher, you're, you're, you're a preacher. That, that's your job. I want to be used of God. Amen. Can I tell you something? Before I ever become a preacher, I want to be used of God. I want God to use me. I don't want to just sit around and, and mold and mildew. I want God to use me. I, when I came to this church, that's one of the things I said. Listen, I'm not coming to play games. I'm not coming to play games. I'm not interested in just church. I want to see God use me. I want to see God do something with the church. I want to see God do something with His people. God will give us opportunity to be used if we'll let him. 
opportunity this week. God's going to give you an opportunity just for no other reason because I'm preaching this message. God's going to give you an opportunity to be used by Him. But what will you do with the opportunity that He's going to give you? What are you going to do with that opportunity? An opportunity that sometimes it passes by. If you don't take it, it never returns. You see, we have those opportunities, but there's the tragedy of the lost opportunity. The lost opportunity. I think of lives and I think of different ones that have went out into eternity and the opportunities that they've, that they've had and, and uh, how that God could have used them in, in, in great ways if they would have taken the opportunities to give Him. You see, life is short. And just because you think you got it tomorrow doesn't mean that you do. James 4.14 says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow... So you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. It goes on, he says, for what is your life? It is even as a vapor, even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. And when that life vanishes away, so does every opportunity to live for God. It's sealed. Every opportunity. We need to live for God now. We have opportunity now. So, but preacher Pete, the world's getting harder and harder, and it's getting darker and darker. Oh, that means we got more opportunities. It's like, it's like a, a, a Johnny Red that I think it's Johnny Red, whoever what that fellow's name was, and and. Uh, uh, he, they was in, in the battle and they was in those trenches and they was firing back and forth and everything and all of a sudden they seen him come flying out of that thing and, and going across that field. People was a shooting, he was a dodging, he was a running and next thing you know he come dragging back one of the enemy and he threw him down in the, in, in the, in the, in the foxhole, the ditch there where he's at and, and his commander said, where'd you get him? He said, y'all over yonder. He said, there's more of them if you want one. Opportunity. Do you want one? There's more out yonder. Do you want one? Opportunity's there. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you for loving us. Truly, there's a tragedy of a lost opportunity. Help it not to be so in our lives. Help it not to be so in our church. But help us, Lord, to live in such a way that we take the opportunities that you give us Help us to shun the opportunities of the world and Satan, Lord, that they would try to destroy, destroy us and pull us away from you. But help us to take the opportunities that you've laid before us this week to live for you, to be a witness for you. Lord, to magnify you, to praise you, to worship you. Lord, help us to take the opportunities that you place in our path. And we'll give you the honor and glory for this, we pray in Jesus' name.